Rhodes Projects, uh, circa 2014. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome, Mickey. Thanks. Thank you for having us today. We want to talk a little bit about transportation infrastructure from a national view, um, as well as locally in Lincoln. And then Thomas is going to give us a rundown of what's going on in Lincoln. <laughs> what's going on in Lincoln in 2014 for construction projects we do like to make sure that you and the public are aware of um, how we're going to be uh, affecting them in their neighborhoods so um, we're here to talk about transportation infrastructure as well as the financing needed to support it um, this is a really critical time for roads and not just in Lincoln but from a national perspective Today's challenge is not how to engineer infrastructure. In fact, we have um, a divergent diamond in our future, which is very exciting. Um, but today's challenge is, is actually how to fund infrastructure. And as a transportation agency, we feel like it's our job to be an advocate for an investment in, of roads, whether it's new construction or maintenance. Hold on one second here. Keep getting this notice. Um, so what's the big picture? There's actually a national crisis going on with respect to roads. Um, the American Society of Civil Engineers gives American roads, including bridges, a D rating and projects that the country will need to invest $170 billion annually on roads infrastructure. The projected annual gap in funding is estimated at $79 billion. With 69,000 structurally deficient bridges, the nation needs $3.3 trillion by 2020. Uh, to remedy this situation. However, the gap is estimated at more than $1.3 trillion. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce says, the deterioration of the nation's infrastructure undermines the economy, jeopardizes our safety, threatens our quality of life, and harms the environment. The next slide is kind of a scary picture, and I want to impress upon you, this isn't um, in order to get you to support roads funding. Um, but it is a scary thing to look at. This is the I-35 West Mississippi River Bridge in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It was an eight-lane steel truss arch bridge that carried 140,000 vehicles per day. On August 1, 2007, during the evening rush hour, it suddenly collapsed, killing 13. It injured 145. The cause of the collapse was a design defect coupled with excessive weight on the bridge at the time of rush hour. Um, so my point in showing you this is not, again, to scare you into <laughs> roads financing. The point is that concrete, asphalt, and steel, some of the hardest, strongest, toughest materials in the world, they are entropic. They break down and they deteriorate. And in order to hold up and work for long periods of time, they need proper design, inspection, maintenance, repair, and replacement on a regular basis. That takes resources, both human and capital. What people often forget is that this investment of resources is continual and perpetual, like a car, a house, or even the Great Wall. You have to tend to it on a regular basis. This engineering marvel brings 25 million visitors per year. It was begun in the 7th century BC and is about 4,000 miles long. But since the 1950s, the Great Wall has been undergoing constant renovation and reconstruction. All things fall apart. Decay is inevitable. The Chinese recognize that if they stop investing in maintenance and reconstruction of the wall, it could crumble away and eventually disappear. Public infrastructure is no different in the states. Unfortunately, the federal government has held transportation funding at stagnant levels. The gas tax has remained unchanged for more than 20 years. Since the backlog of projects aren't getting any smaller, states like Nebraska have had to take matters into their own hands. You'll recall LB 84, the <coughs> Build Nebraska Act, which diverts a portion of state sales tax to roads. But states like Maryland, Pennsylvania, Vermont, Wyoming, they've all enacted policies in 13 to get billions of new funding for transportation. In Texas, lawmakers agreed to let voters decide whether to divert some oil and natural gas tax revenue to roads. Under that proposal, transportation funding would rise about $1.2 billion, or 12% in 2015. Missouri is looking to hold a vote in November on a one-cent sales tax increase. Missouri's construction budget for roads and bridges has fallen from about $1.3 billion annually 
to only 685 million. It's projected to dip even further to 325 million by 2017. And the trouble for Missouri is that it takes $485 million just to maintain the highway in its current condition. So it's really going to fall behind unless they are successful in their November vote. So as you can see, we're not alone in Nebraska. This, this is a problem on a national scale. And the solution is continual perpetual investment. So let's talk about that investment. I'll start with the definition of roads funding and what roads funding in Lincoln actually means. First, we receive about $45 million annually to devote to these categories, new construction, rehabilitation, operations, maintenance, and obviously the people who deliver these services to the community, our human resources. Our roads department is called engineering services, which consists of design and construction, which is led by Thomas, traffic operations, and street maintenance. The city has over 1,200 miles of arterials, collectors, and residential streets. On a U.S. map, that's the distance between Lincoln and Las Vegas, and would take about 17 hours to drive. We have about 55 bridges and 60 culverts over 20 feet long. Those are classified as bridges. So let me give you a clearer picture of the categories. This is obviously new construction. Everybody uh, is familiar with, with what that looks like. Rehab, a typical mill and overlay. Um, is pictured here. Think downtown Lincoln in 2012. Um, there are two things that we really love about rehab. One, they're short in duration, so you can close and open up the street relatively quickly <coughs> without much uh, inconvenience to the public. Secondly, it means that we're stretching existing local funds farther, since spending one dollar in preventative maintenance now can save between eight and fifteen dollars in more costly repair work later. You're actually extending the life of the road. Then there's operations. We operate and maintain about 416 traffic and PED signals. We have over 60,000 traffic signs. Reliability and efficiency of the signal system equals less congestion. We also care about safety. Every year we conduct a crash study to assist us in selecting safety treatments all over town and it's paying off. In the America's Best Drivers Report, Allstate ranked the city of Lincoln fifth out of 200 cities, and we've been able to secure approximately $11 million in federal safety funding for traffic improvements in just the past 10 years. Finally, um, this, there's maintenance, and this is actually the muscle of our organization. This is the day-to-day -day work necessary to keep the street system functioning, including street sweeping, snow removal, crack sealing, pothole repair, and curb cuts. We fill almost 21,000 potholes annually. <laughs> um, the one thing I did forget is snow removal, which we're going to be uh, embarking upon tomorrow, no doubt. Um, is that considered a sixth category? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? We've got five categories, so you're putting snow removal under maintenance or its own category. It, it's under maintenance, yeah, but I wanted to make special note of it. So those are all the services that $45 million pay, pays for. The second point about roads funding is when I tell you that $45 million is devoted to roads, um, you might be thinking that I'm just talking about the concrete and asphalt between the curb. Um, but what we're funding is the entire transportation system because obviously there are many ways to move people around, including via sidewalks, trails, and bicycles. The exception here is public transit. StarTran actually has its own budget. Um, but why do we focus on the whole transportation system? Because the more cars and trucks we can move off the road, the less pressure on the road itself. Perhaps we could even defer the cost of widening or maintaining a road because the use of that road is so balanced. Let me um, illustrate this with this picture. This demonstrates street space for 60 people. 60 people in cars, 60 people on the bus, and 60 people using bicycles. That's a huge difference on the impact to a road. But what I also want to make note of here is all of the people using the sidewalks in these photos, a number well above 60, adding no pressure to the road at all. Um, so supporting the entire transportation network actually serves as a pavement preservation program. The single, west, the single best way to preserve something is to not use it at all. Uh, that's why we call it transportation funding as opposed to just roads funding. We have approximately 1,800 miles of sidewalk to maintain and repair. 
And like we've said, sidewalks reduce stress to roads since they provide an alternative way for people to travel. But they also lead to healthy and productive communities. They increase the safety and security of our children walking and biking to school. And studies show that good traversable sidewalks, just like roads, promote economic development. So transportation funding is very holistic and a multimodal picture. Let's break down the dollars. Total revenues are about $45 million per year, um, and these are our revenue sources, $16.5 million in wheel tax, $17.5 million in highway allocation, $6 million from federal funding, other federal funding, $2.3 million in impact fees, and $2.7 million out of the general fund. So hold that amount in your mind, $45 million. Now compare that amount to the projected annual needs of 50 to 53 million, and already you can see that we're seven to eight million dollars short annually. Um, but who defines projected annual needs, and how is that number actually developed? While Public Works is the agency charged with delivering transportation projects to the public, these needs are actually defined by the community during the comprehensive planning process. The LRTP, the Long Range Transportation Plan, was updated with L Plan 2040. And in it, a goal was established to complete 72 miles of transportation improvements to meet projected land use development out to the year 2040. To get to that desired outcome, Public Works would have to facilitate construction of about 2.5 miles of new road per year. And that may sound easy, but in dollars that equates to about $21.3 million annually. New construction is, is quite pricey. We also have to invest in pavement management to extend the life of our roads. To keep them in good condition, we have to re rehabilitate about 46 miles of roads per year at a cost of 15 million annually. And finally, we have to ensure the current condition of the street is maintained and operating properly. So we invest in traffic operations, street sweeping, filling potholes, etc., at a cost of 16 million. But again, 45 million in revenue versus um, 53 million in projected need. The sad truth is, in the last three years, we only had enough funding to improve 39 out of 1,200 total street miles. That equates to improving a mere 1% of our roads per year. If you think that seven to eight million dollar gap is a challenge, let me address some new challenges that we face in the next budget. Seth, yes, 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 yes. Four categories there, you also have human resources, and you didn't put any funding for that. Okay, that's captured in the amounts, yeah. Oh, it's spread throughout the other it's four It's spread, categories. yes, it's spread Do you know what the human resource figure is? I don't, not with me, but I certainly can get it to you. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. I assume that would include your staff, your engineering mm -hmm. staff, and mm -hmm. Absolutely. And capital. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Okay try to hustle through so we can get through this. So we have a $4 million uh, debt service that we pay um, from a 2006 and 2009 bond issue. We're also contending with 5% construction inflation. Um, I'm hopeful, but federal funding does appear stagnant. There's never been a better time to invest, but again, um, the federal, lo federal lawmakers have generally opposed raising the 18.4 cent per gallon tax and the last time they did anything to raise it was 20 years ago. But even a five cent increase now would raise more than eight billion in revenue and create 600,000 construction jobs nationwide. Uh, the fund has struggled for years to remain in the black and federal estimates show, federal estimates show that it won't be able to meet its obligations by 2015. Moreover, the current highway bill known as MAP 21 is set to expire in October. Um, the fourth thing is finally it's critical that we f fund our match for the South Beltway. That has a, a price tag of $40 million. These are the things that we're concentrating on in the budget process and some of the challenge we face ahead. Um, but clearly we need long -term viable, a long-term viable solution. Um, this just asks the question why. I mean, whether it's safety or economic development and jobs or opportunity or just the reality that this is all just deferred maintenance and problems that aren't going away unless we do something about it. Um, whatever your reason is, the thing we all need to remember about public infrastructure is that it's not a one time, I love the car going in. I love it's, that. <laughs> little levity for your day. Yeah. Uh, it's not a one time funding thing or a fast forward fund booster shop type of challenge. Um, 
as long as the need for public infrastructure exists, continual investment in inf infrastructure exists. It's, it's really perpetual. Um, and without proper care and investment and maintenance, all we get is more scary pictures like this. Um, so before we take any questions, why don't I uh, turn it over to Thomas? I try to get done in, in 20 Just minutes. Yeah. Quickly, you can have some information in there that might be helpful for us to get. Can yes. you make that presentation available to us? You bet. I can make the whole presentation available, and I'll also follow up with the human resource breakdown. Okay. okay. Thanks. okay. Ele Great. Electronically. Electronically. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And you go through the paper packet. Yeah, so I just I gotta throw away most of this. You wanna pass that sheet out there to John, I think we missed him. We missed him. No, we don't want to do that. Oh. <laughs> um thank you. <clears throat> well here's here's what we got coming up in twenty fourteen and it's a nice segue. We talked about uh, you know booster shots and such. And if you look at the twenty fourteen uh, line there, you can see some substantial increases. Uh, due to some of the things that we've been able to do working through the council working with the administration um, whether that's the uh, additional funds found for residential because we collected more in gas tax this time and you can see what that has meant to that program um, the state has added two and a half million dollars to work on state highways in the city and uh, the four million dollars that we've uh, done for sidewalks so if you take the, all those together that's about nine nine to ten million dollars additional than what we normally would do and uh, this is probably what Mickey's talking about when she says we need to do it perpetually 2014 should not be a blip on this uh, chart it should be the average every year that we work on with our streets um, that's that's what we should be doing so uh, when you see what's going on in 2014 um, just think to yourself that's really where we desire what the community has said they desire to do in terms of new construction in terms of keeping up what we got and in terms of uh, doing repairs on there um, you probably have seen the maps out here in front of us but before we found the additional funding this is what the sidewalk program this is what rehab was going to look like this is what it's going to be now this summer because of those additional things that we found a lot of that you see up there in the orange on the big map as a result of the state highway funding um, that has, has come along with us as well. So you can see um, what that additional eight to nine million dollars that she talked about needing it would go to uh, in terms of what it would not be on those maps if we didn't have that. So um, hit a couple of highlights. Old Cheney, if it uh, uh, didn't get delayed because of the snow, is going to be closing very shortly. So. Uh, John, you'll probably be hearing from a few constituents, I'm sure, shortly, because as, as always, uh, folks decide they know a better way around than following the marked detours, and they cut through neighborhoods. Um, we tell them that's not probably the smartest thing to do, but sometimes they've got to just find their way through. So we urge the folks out there to have a little patience. Uh, take the marked detour if you can. Uh, have patience while the people who don't know how to read cut their way through your neighborhood, but they'll figure out that they shouldn't be there. While you're mentioning old Cheney, would you mind just going over the time frame again that you're anticipating just for our viewers? Um, sure. Old Cheney, east-west traffic um, uh, is closing. Um, we are keeping the intersections of 77th and 80th open for north-south traffic so people who live south of Old Cheney can get their kids up to that school and then back home um, as well. Uh, come June, when school gets out, we will close those intersections down and get try to get those knocked out before school has to reopen again in August. Uh, I know we're all for kids getting more time in the classroom, but every time they shrink that summer vacation, that's less work time for me to work in the summer. So um, I'm caught between a rock and a hard place. Smart kids or more time to do construction. So we'll make the most of that. And then ultimately, hopefully sometime around the end of October, 1st of November, we'll have that reopened and, and ready to go again. But it's going to be a very major undertaking with the water line relocation, gas main relocation, retaining walls, storm drainage, and the sidewalks, the trail, and the, the uh, traffic uh, improvements on the road itself. You're saying October of this year? <laughs> end of October this year. <laughs> Or November this year. of this year, yes. Okay, well, 
<laughs> and that'll depend on weather. That'll depend on uh, hopefully we don't find things where we don't expect them to be and, and all that as well. Peace Street project was <laughs> <laughs> who comes out. Okay. I don't think we do Super Bowl prop bets here. Thirty uh, Third Street's another major street that folks have been um, anxiously awaiting for north of O. Uh, that that we are. We'll continue work on Southwest Fortieth. Now uh, the other thing that we'd hit on is is um, not only is transportation funding needed, but there's a, a whole bunch of water mains being replaced this year. And this is the last year of the uh, SRF funding for those water main replacements. So that's something else that I would point out to. It affects traffic, it affects people, it affects uh, our roads. But that's something too that they should be doing on an annual basis is about that many water mains as, as you're gonna see on the maps here. And those are the little, water, little pipe with the spigot on top of it as well. And there's like, quite a number of those that will be uh, hitting this year. Be happy to entertain any questions, or happy to let in Mickey entertain all the questions if you'd like to ask him to. We also have people from uh, the other sections of the department. If you have questions on wastewater, water, storm, storm, fiber, fiber, it's just happening. Wow. <laughs> it's a uh, cornucopia of <laughs> projects. Okay. Uh, so, in terms of the uh, uh, the water main replacements. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how do you decide which mains are to be replaced? Where are the priorities? We actually have a great um, program for that. The, the trouble is, I think we briefed you all before when we were talking about Belmont, was that when mains break, we that's the time to evaluate what condition they're in, um, which seems sort of, I don't know, backwards. But um, they do actually have a, con a condition assessment process, and then 25, the upper 25th percentile, um, goes into the main replacement program. And I think Steve Owen, hopefully, or some next, next year. Oh, next great. Year. Nick can answer a little bit more if you want more clarification. But did I? Yeah. And basically, you? we just we look oh, at the. Come up. Nick. Come on up, Nick. Yeah. This is a friendly, friendly crowd. <coughs> Thomas is trying to get out of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, basically, we look at two things. Number one is the likelihood of it breaking again. And then the master plan that we're just now working on, good. it has shown us traditionally that once a water main breaks, the likelihood that it'll break again is about seven years. And once it's happened the second time, the likelihood is it's gonna break again in four years. And it starts dropping because of the corrosive soils that we have. That's some new information just in the last few months that we've, that we've gathered. So you look at the likelihood that it's gonna break and then you also look at the consequences. Just a simple residential neighborhood being out of water for two hours, small consequence. Breaking downtown, putting businesses, commercial, industrial, hospitals, beauty shops, <laughs> out of water, much higher consequences. So we, we factor those together, and then that's what gives us a rating, and then we just take the highest number on those ratings, then we compare all that with the street projects that are going on. We use an opportunity like, um, was it Prescott from 47th to 48th um, mm. by Union College? That one didn't have a bad maintenance history, but it was bad enough that we said, we don't want to put all this brand new paving mm. over a 100-year-old water main. So we replace that block of water main with that street project. Mm -hmm. So we call those opportunity projects that, uh, that we do also. So. Yeah, and Nick is also good about reminding me that just because you have a long list of projects, you also need the people to facilitate those projects. And, and that gets tricky. We have to work within our, our own means. That, that master plan would, yeah. would suggest that we need six and a half to seven million dollars a year in main replacement money. Right now, we're budgeting in the CIP and closer to four million a year. Right. That's what we, we can would handle. need new staff to enlarge that program because you need people to go out and shut the water mains off, turn them on, to chlorinate them, to tap the replacement connections for every property, and we we just we aren't staffed to do a bigger program. <coughs> so. Okay. Well, I understand it's difficult to evaluate the condition of these pipes in yes. the ground, but nothing has has happened yet. But 
is it is it that there's not a, a, a way to do that or is it that it's just difficult or very expensive to do some kind of evaluation of pipes that haven't broken I think yeah, I think a we question. a couple of other things we've learned in the master planning process is to categorize the kind of materials Types. that went in the ground by the decades so the very first water mains were cast iron pipes that were almost an inch thick by the by the uh, 50s they had grown to less than half that thick now they're duct iron pipes and they're even mm -hmm. about a third that thick so the corrosion if if the corrosion starts it takes less time to get through them so we've got kind of a graph for each kind of material and the amount of that pipe with a GIS we can track how much of each kind of pipe we have in the ground and that'll give us a, a good game plan to at least predict how much we need to be spending in what periods of time it can be done yeah yeah so it, but there's no mechanism uh, for actually checking the condition yeah. of a particular pipe there are some very uh, expensive yeah, mechanisms <laughs> that that communities are doing on very large diameter pipes you know once you get into 36 inch and greater um, where you can send devices down the inside of the pipe and depending on if it's steel reinforced concrete um, ductile iron, different kinds of tests. We have not invested a lot in that, but we do plan to put some of that into our CIP program for the for the future, uh, because a lot of you know we've got pipes that are aging in those sizes, and we have never had a catastrophic failure mm -hmm. on a large diameter pipe. Knock on wood, Nick. Knock on wood. Find <laughs> <Like> some wood. <laughs> yes. And, and some communities have. I mean, there's a, 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 a video in Maryland where the fire truck was being washed down the street because the water flow from the 66 inch water main it could not drive on the street. It was it was floating wow. down the hill. So, yeah. other questions? What what materials typically are being used to replace uh, water mains now? Um, for about the last 15 years, PVC has been our, our choice. Number one, it's, it's immune to corrosion. Um, number two, it's less expensive. The one thing that we don't know is what is the real life of it. We don't have 100 years of experience. Um, typically, we would design our facilities for 50 years or greater life. The average age of the water mains that we've replaced the last few years is 80 years. But I have to tell you, one of those pipes is 130 years old, and one of them is 30 years old mm -hmm. because it was in very corrosive, corrosive sure. areas. So. Any other questions for Nick? Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, may I ask one, uh, either for Mr. Schaefer or Ms. Esposito, on your page three, you had 98th Street from blank to whole bridge. Um, that should be corrected on the web now, but that was um, Waterford Estates Drive to Holdridge. It's about a half mile north of O. So it's finishing off that last um, half mile of 98th Street. Thank you. But that is corrected on, on the web. And so if there's anybody that would like one of these uh, lovely handouts, you just mm. go to lincoln.ne.gov in that keyword search, type in projects take you to a page and there'll be a box with an orange cone in it. This will be the one time that I tell you to go hit the traffic control device. Usually you <laughs> avoid the traffic control device, but please hit that drum with your, your uh, clicker and it'll bring you up this exact thing. And it is corrected on there. I checked that class. All of our constituents, citizens can go to the city website, city hit the traffic cone, or projects, hit mm -hmm. the traffic cone. And, and that map is being posted also as well. So it should be up shortly mm -hmm. if they're more visual. I'll ask you a question about one of my favorite subjects, Northwest 48th Street. <laughs> and Mickey mentioned the, the uh, diverging diamond. Mm -hmm. So how, so we got a couple different projects. The state's project mm -hmm. with uh, the di diverging diamond, I-80, Northwest 48th interchange, and the uh, improvement rebuilding, I guess, of Northwest 48th Street. How, what, which is first? Or are they well, together the, or the, state, the state had planned on starting here in 2014. Um, that's really the finishing the six lanes of Interstate I-80 is what that project is. 
And so they'll be starting here in, in 2014, hopefully on that. I understand that uh, maybe they have a few uh, or one federal hurdle to get over before they can get going on that. But they'll be starting in 2014, and uh, we've been coordinating with them. We'll start in 2015 um, on our project so that uh, we can match up and uh, work together and not have to build temporary uh, uh, temporary pavement to the extent possible. There'll be a lot of temporary pavement out there, but hopefully we get to reduce some of it by working with the state. You know the duration of the project mm -hmm. for the state? Just for the state is supposed to start in 2014 and continue in through 2015 before they're all completely done. We're gonna work in 2015 and depending on how things go, we may go into 2016. But what our plan is, um, is to have traffic will be going through there at all times. Um, and uh, even if we have to continue on, we should have everything done except for some stretches in between some intersections that will fill in in early 16. Okay. Other questions on specific Projects, roads, projects. Good. How about sidewalks? Mm -hmm. Mansion sidewalks. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of them coming forward. Yeah, a lot and of I them think right there. The, the Cox funding is coming mm -hmm. before you as well as the proposal to fund that. Um, but it'll be it'll be a big, big deal. Hey. Maps big project. Project. illustrate that. <laughs> yeah. are, are we seeing any progress or interest in the citizens? Where we've had a program in the past, anyway anyway where they would uh, if they paid to have it done themselves we'd reimburse them like half or something or could you refresh our memory on that a square wouldn't it yeah four dollars a square and we um, we have that program it continues uh, there's a percentage carved out for that program in this um, next year um, we'll continue that program yeah it's still available but are many citizens taking advantage of that you know, Thomas, um, I don't know. yeah yeah we we always yeah, we've had have exceeded spent. the funding of mm -hmm. every year that we've <coughs> done yeah. that. Um, there, there are several taking advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Is it first come, first serve? It is. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's usually gone right away. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, most of these sidewalks are ones that are larger separations. Right, two inches or greater. And the cause of those separations is, is there one particular thing that's the, mm -hmm. that's the most common cause or the variety? What? Yeah, variety. I think it's a variety. I don't know that I've sat down and categorized or tried to categorize. There's about 1,400 locations here, uh, two inch or greater separations. Um, you know, it can range from tree roots, it can range from settlements over utilities, it can range from, uh, I know in one of my neighborhoods, um, the, some kid got in an SUV and drove up and down the sidewalk and that didn't help things out and created some two inch separations because there was, it was bridging. Mm. It was okay for people on bikes and even my fat basset hound, but it wasn't okay for an <laughs> SUV to, to go over it and, mm. and created those. So. There's a variety, but tree roots and settlements are probably the top the two, if most out of that. But I couldn't tell you which one's higher than another. Yeah. And if, if we find a tree root, it, I mean, our usual thing is to try to save the tree but fix the sidewalk around yep. it. You've yeah. seen, if you've seen some of the sidewalks that kind of yeah. do this around the tree, that's our attempt to do that. Um, no, that's good. I mean, that used to be we or insisted on being, being, being straight, and, and, and that made it very difficult sometimes mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. save but the tree. That do you know that we'll probably be back again in that location, most likely doing it right. again, because the, right. it's not going to stop. The tree generally is not going to stop growing. Yeah. Other questions on sidewalks? Just that I guess we know about the 1,400 sort of high priority needs, but it could be that as the public becomes more aware that there are more reported sites we don't actually know what the total universe is because right. it would take so long we to think get out there maybe a, you know at least another 10,000 um, out there right out there over a quarter yeah that are quarter. somewhere over you know inch. over a quarter to a half inch and above and uh, it's going to get tough here as we run out of funding for the sidewalk when you can do this one because it got reported with the guy around the corner for mm -hmm. some reason never reported is 
um, and we just we've reached the end of it. We ran out of money. That's why it needs to be perpetual, mm -hmm. so we can get back to them in a reasonable amount of time. If you're on a 17-year inspection cycle and it runs out <coughs> after 15 years, I'm not very bright, but I can figure out that's not going to work over the long haul. Mm -hmm. That's where we were at least last time I was reporting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, John. Uh, on the smaller gaps, um, uh, do we ever go grind off a spot on the sidewalk to smooth it out? I see that in, for private businesses all over town where they have a little separation. You go to a bank and, you know, they've, they've ground it off so it's smooth in front of their door area. But it's, you know, they clearly replacing all that concrete just to fix a quarter or half an inch is something they, they didn't want to do. Can, can, do we ever do that? We're looking into it. We actually had a company in um, this past summer that showed us some things that they could do. Um, we're pondering that. Um, we're pondering whether we can create the device ourselves and, and do it in-house um, because that would sure be a lot nicer instead of having to mobilize someone from Minnesota to come down and say, oh, here's our list and try to catch them all. If we could have one of those on a truck or two train some individuals on city staff and and be able to go out in a week or two and catch them but we're looking into that um, with ADA issues you have to get something pretty smooth sure um, you know we've we've attempted to use the curb grinder and if you look at how smooth the curbs are they're smooth enough for a car but probably not going to meet ADA smoothness <laughs> results um, so we've tried some different things um, not having great success yet but well, we have to have some companies in town that since potentially we'll they must be doing it for private businesses so mm -hmm. not sure how they're doing that okay. the closest one I've found is uh, out of Omaha but really their work mm -hmm. crew is out of Minnesota they have a representative in, in Omaha but the crew is actually out of Minnesota oh yes David Young is here you can answer the question Thanks for being here. Um, of course. The projects of note related to fiber mm -hmm. talk a lot about connections between different governmental buildings, but I think from your briefings in the past, you've made it clear that that this has a wider community benefit, and I thought maybe you could just elaborate on that a bit so that we were clear on that. And then I also noticed <laughs> just that some of the damage to existing fiber uh, came from rodents, and I wondered <laughs> if we can avoid that somehow <laughs> going forward, if these new uh -huh. kinds of connections, or if they're just inevitably get into our conduit. The pipe, pipe, I suppose, will be <laughs> <laughs> We have many, many, many tenants of our conduit, um, some of them less desirable. but. <laughs> Anytime we do a project now, we install enough capacity for a minimum of four additional occupants. Um, and so when we do a project under one of these, we're adding capacity for businesses to come through there as well, different uh, leases of the conduit system. Um, as we install underneath the street and in the right-of-way, all of our projects are under the street and in the right-of-way. It makes it cheaper for the next person to come through, lowers the end cost for a business to provide services, correct? That's the basic premise of what we're doing. Um, these projects here are being funded under the uh, COPS Certificate of Participation Project, so we're looking at this evening, I think, first round to discuss it. And they were just for the 2013-2014 year. Uh, we are looking at a broader package, CIP funding for 2014-2016, which we will bring and discuss over the next six months with you, we have identified across the city. Um, the aging fiber, it actually says six months, it should be 18 months that fiber's been down, we've never identified a funding mechanism for operations and maintenance of the fiber network. Um, the city owns 95 miles of fiber that connects the majority of our buildings. I think we have 60 small sites where we have two or less employees, uh, election locations, churches where we have that we don't have our fiber run to. All of the other buildings are run on this fiber. And so we're going to be asking for an operations and maintenance budget uh, to support that infrastructure. This fiber specifically um, is about three blocks long, and we just don't have any money to replace it. And so we figured we would put it in as part of this package. Um, fiber does get chewed up underground. It happens. Um, you could buy steel shielded fiber, but I would rather buy 
inexpensive fiber and replace it three times than I would buy three times of expensive fiber because it doesn't happen very often. Can you put some mouse traps down there? We could put some mouse traps down there, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's 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 such a rarity for and it's just one of those issues that this is an older part of town and you know most of our new stuff where we're doing the mainline conduit groups or smaller PVC pipes they really don't get in there the cable size when you put it inside of the inner duct eliminates that I know some lists you're going to be extending fiber from the experience building to the information services so would that be to this building you go up to so we have a, a master plan for our fiber network. Uh, today on the agenda this afternoon, we're going to be approving a contract to upgrade our, our speed from 50 megabits a second to 250 megabits a second. That contract is upgradable to a full one gigabit. Right now, we operate that connection at IS, uh, a couple doors down, and we have, as part of the 10 gig project, we're going to upgrade the link from that building to this building out to the military tower, which is our 911 location and out to the MSC and extend a backbone that is 10 gigabit, which will handle all of our VoIP traffic and all of the new on-base server traffic, basically upgrading the backbone to 10 gigabit, allowing everybody else to connect with one gigabit connections going forward. How many miles will that be? We're not putting any new fiber on that. We're doing some fiber cleanup, uh, some re-splicing, uh, redoing the architecture of that link specifically, and then we're putting new uh, blades in our routers. We bought routers that are capable of 10 gig with the VoIP project, we just didn't buy the 10 gig blades. And basically we'll put those on the lasers and then take the fiber that currently runs in the cabinets and jumper through underground and fusion splice it all together. Do you have any idea what the cost of that will be? I know exactly what the cost of that will be. <laughs> um, we have $120,000 projected for all of the equipment and the fiber splicing. So you're using the existing conduit and all and Yes, was sir. this anticipated from the beginning then? You just wanted to get things started bare bones and then upgrade? This, is, this funding package was specifically where, uh, as part of the COPS, was $581,000. It's these projects. We have $200,000 of opportunity money, uh, which is when we're adding different uh, corridors, we wanted to have a little bit of funding there so we could extend if we have a new lease comes in and we need to build a connection downtown or as part of a project where we don't have CIP funding, we have that amount of money, and the balance goes to these four projects. So, yes. As we're uh, extending our, our services, you know, throughout the city, talk a little bit about the, and the infrastructure issues of, of ex extending conduit and things that you might be running into with, with old conduit, things that match, don't match. How, how does that work? Historically, uh, starting in 1978, we started putting in conduit around the city for the ITS infrastructure. It was an inch and a quarter galvanized pipe. Uh, we have a significant quantity of that. We have 216 miles total of conduit. Somewhere around the 80s, we switched to two inch, and then in the 90s, we went to four inch. Um, now, our new standard is six smaller inch and a quarter poly pipes. Um, which allows for us to pull six cables through, no problem, lease it up to different carriers. Um, when we come to a situation where we have inch and a quarter pipe, we make it available to tenants on an as available basis. If you want to upgrade the pipe, great. We're probably not going to upgrade it except for with a road project going forward. The CIP money we have a, are asking for in 1416 is to do that with all of our road projects and we have a master plan that we have put together and uh, which will be included in that package which shows the entire city and how we will bring it up into small individual cells uh, as part of our new architecture. So anytime we have existing conduit, we want, it, we want to use it. Uh, it costs us uh, $10 a foot at the lowest level to install conduit and when you're doing it downtown and you're doing it without a street project, it's in the $80 a foot range because you're paying to cut the street, cut the fiber, well, our businesses are paying for that too. They're paying for a carrier to come in and take on that obligation, which results in higher prices. If we do it as part of a street project or as part of a community master plan, then for you to get fiber at your business is very inexpensive as well as it is for you. And that's what we are doing. But we want to utilize the existing conduit because some locations, hey, we don't have a lot of business interest. Maybe we have one business and we could go a mile in existing conduit and it'll be tough to pull it in, but once it's in, hey, we don't need to do that anymore. 
fiber is intriguing with all the technology. I will talk for hours. <laughs> you get me started, we will, we will miss our next meeting. Keep going. Uh, uh, there's so much happening, I guess, and I, I have to plead ignorance on this, but I know there's some businesses that will use a, a wireless type approach from building to building with dishes and so forth. Is there, where's the break even where you want to have a business or government wants to have it a hard fiber in conduit versus doing some of the wireless approaches to get access? At all phases of wireless, it comes back to fiber. You need to have that underground connection. We have companies downtown that will bounce fiber from the top, or wireless signals from the top of our taller buildings. You have the mobile platforms, AT&T, Verizon, US Cellular. Every cell site, every antenna site at some point comes back to fiber. And so for us, we actually have several locations, the uh, Northwest 48th Street Transfer Station, the uh, wastewater, or uh, no, the landfill, mm -hmm. where we actually use fiber to shoot, or wireless to shoot a mile and a half, two miles, uh, because the cost to provide you know, for 10 employees is prohibitive. But at some point, you want to come back to fiber because wireless is limited in throughput under current technology. The <coughs> bandwidth is limited. You know, we get uh, 4G is 10 megabits a second. I'm talking about 10 gigabits on our fiber backbone. So you always, there is a trade-off. And so you will come back to fiber at some point. The cost of putting in the fiber infrastructure is what we want to drive down. So you're saying with part of your network you'll have fiber, but there'll also be some wireless connections to help bridge wireless. gaps and that way fit into the economical package? Wireless makes great redundancy. A lot of people talk about redundancy. You want a path coming in and if you know the big yellow cable finder, a backhoe, finds your cable and digs it up, you lose that site. It may take hours to get that back up. But if we can use the fiber to provide our high-speed reliable connection and then take a wireless link and shoot it back to a building shoot it back to military tower the tallest tower we have then we have that your service won't be as great until we get the fiber fixed but it'll always be on and that's what we use the, our wireless for right now um, it is providing some of our longer lower occupancy links um, but we will use it continually as our backup links. We won't take those down. How are we doing on some of the fire, or the conduit we put in with the street uh, resurfacing this last year or two? Are we getting that filled up? Or is it, I believe they're what? We leased before? two carriers and we are in active negotiations with others right now. So hope to bring forward more success right before I ask for my CIP. <laughs> <laughs> okay, other questions for Mr. Young? Okay. Maybe the last thing uh, to, to touch on was uh, the, the snow removal. Um, okay. Where are we in terms of our uh, budget this winter with snow removal? Estimated uh, spent half of it or less, more of it? I think, we've, um, I think we're doing okay. I don't have the actual numbers for you today. We did um, spend a, uh, an amount on salt. We tried a new product called Red Salt this year. It's very effective, high level of service, but it's a little bit more expensive. So our salt budget, and maybe you saw a fiscal impact statement come forward, um, our salt budget is over, but we think that we can make up for it in the total uh, budget package. But we will, um, I can get actual numbers to you, but until I know all of the payroll has been processed, I don't know where we stand today. Um, we are prepared for tomorrow. In fact, I, uh, we've been receiving texts about um, getting into these areas, um, starting material spreading um, as early as this evening, um, and getting possibly into residentials as well. And I think that um, Wednesday they're projecting to get into residentials and working arterials, emergency routes, and school routes all day Tuesday. So, but I'll get some of those budget numbers to you uh, after this after event, this week, yeah. yeah, after this event, um, then I'll know what the forecast is for the rest of the snow season. So. Very good. Any other questions at all for Mickey? Thank you. Don't see any. Thank you very all right, much. Thank you so for, much for, for your thank time. You. Thank, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. About five minutes and then we'll convene the directors. Mm -hmm.